All right, hi you guys. Today I'm gonna be presenting my persuasive speech for y'all. How many times have you caught yourself in an argument and realized that what you said wasn't true or 100% right? All of a sudden you got that deep, twisted, unpleasant feeling and you start to sweat just a little. All you can think about is how you are ready for this conversation to be done as fast as possible. Well, you're not the only one who has felt this. One of the most common things amongst humans are that we don't like being wrong because of that experience that, or because of that feeling that we get. Luckily, over time, we can learn to embrace this feeling and learn to make it a more positive or neutral experience. We can do this by understanding what these feelings are and some of the components that make it up to be as bad as it is. When you realize you've made a mistake, you almost instantly know because of that unpleasant feeling that starts to kick in. A social psychologist named Leon Festinger created the term for this exact feeling, which is cognitive dissonance. When defining this term, he said that it is a state of tension that occurs whenever a person holds two cognitions, ideas, beliefs, attitudes, opinions, that are psychologically inconsistent. He then continued to say that dissonance produces mental discomfort ranging from minor pangs to deep anguish. Carl Travis, a co-author of the book Mistakes Were Made But Not By Me, can, built on Festinger's ideas and said that cognitive dissonance is what we feel when the self-concept, I'm smart, I'm kind, I'm convinced this belief is true, is threatened by evidence that we did something that wasn't smart, that we did something that hurt another person, or that the belief isn't true. Now that we know what this horrible feeling is called, one might ask, what are some of the components that make it so uncomfortable? The biggest one is simply, we don't like to be wrong. As humans, we are extremely competitive and like to be right. When we are right, when we feel right, we are building on our identity, which affects who we are. So whenever you are being questioned, it almost feels as though the other person is losing respect for you. Since we were little kids through our upbringing, we were taught what was right and what was wrong. We quickly learned that if we do something wrong, there will often be a consequence that follows. Whereas if we do something right, we get praised and rewarded. Tina Hallis, a founder of Positive Edge said that our brains have been wired to perceive a reward response and feel good. But if we experience uncertainty, such as realizing we're wrong, we have similar threat responses as if someone were trying to harm us, so it's natural to feel defensive. This explains why we get so upset and why we feel like we're losing the respect of others whenever um, they don't agree with us or have a different opinion. Another component that adds to our discomfort of cognitive disson dissonance is that we don't like to show our vulnerable side. Paul Milan, an online blogger, said that what the world needs, they say, is people who are willing to offer our best. Even though we might not, even though we might be wrong, even though our best might not be good enough, even though our best might not be noticed at all. Something I've noticed is that in today's time, it's really hard for people to put themselves out there and to show their vulnerable side. And with showing vulnerability follows is admitting that you did something wrong or you said something wrong.
Dr. Tim Sharp, Chief Happiness Officer at the Happiness Institute says, that for non-apologists, the irrational need to always be perfect rules their ego, and they feel their screw-ups are unforgivable. He then continues to say, the difficulty in admitting failure largely comes from unrealistic expectations that I should get it right all the time. Now, I think it's good that we push ourselves to always try and be right, but sometimes we do hold ourselves to higher expectations than what we should have. And when we have these unrealistic expectations, we're really setting ourselves up to not be successful and to not show our vulnerable side, which can then have an effect on us having built up tension internally because we know we are wrong, but don't want to acknowledge or admit it to others. Another strong point that Dr. Sharp brought up was how if someone does admit to being wrong, they often feel as though they aren't as strong or powerful. A study <coughs> a study by European Journal of Social Psychology agreed with this point and said, apology refusal also results in increased feelings of power, control, and value integrity, both of which mediated the effect of refusal on self-esteem. I think it that everyone struggles with not allowing their power control and self-esteem get the best of them and that it's hard to admit that you have done something wrong. But over time, if we acknowledge and express our wrongdoings, this unpleasant feeling that we get will gradually become less and less discomforting because we learn how to deal with it and we learn how to acknowledge that, okay, we did something wrong, how can we make this better? And turn this negative feeling into a more positive or neutral feeling. Ultimately, because of our competitiveness, upbringing and lack of vulnerability, we will experience different ranges of cognitive dissonance. The more we realize that we aren't right and that we do mess up sometimes the more psychological consequences psychological and internal consequences we will face but with that comes learning how to make it a better feeling and ultimately not make it as bad as it once was so the next time you realize that you've made a mistake how will you cope with your feelings and move on?